What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Bass Singers Disc Golf Channel. Josh here, and I'm joined with Seth Overbay. What's up, guys? And we've got some more BDGC tournament coverage for you. Please subscribe for more disc golf videos if you haven't done so already. We're still at the 2019 Tennessee State Disc Golf Championships. This is the third day round four at Cherokee Park Disc Golf Course. After 54 holes, you can see we've got Chris Dickerson with quite a lead at 43 down. Joey Lutz and Brandon Brown just behind him, and Eli Ferguson and Johnny McRae at 31 down. So uh, Cherokee is the more open park in here in Morristown, so a lot more OBs are going to be in play here because uh, guys are going to be going for some big arm shots, right, Seth? Yes. Um, distance here on this course really helps you. It helps you uh, get those bonus birdies that you know people with the lower arm speed can't quite get. Mm -hmm. Separate yourself from the field. So hole three is 445 feet, and if you can see that dirt spot right out near the road there, there was a tree there that has been there since the course opened. It actually fell down this year, so it opened this hole up quite a bit for these righty hyzer shots. It's basically just a wide open hyzer now, if you get around that. The crease was pretty inside there on the first shot. Mm -hmm. Joey looks like he's going for uh, more of the conventional lefty route, the inside route, yep. uh, but going with the forehand flick. It's a great shot if you can hit it, and that's looking pretty good. You you turn it over there on the inside, and if your disc has enough stability, you see it comes back there, and you can give yourself a putt for the two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's definitely got a putt there. Next up, we got uh, Brandon Brown of Prodigy Disc, a regional player, uh, just huge arm, great jump putts, great player all around. I've personally seen BB do each route before, but it looked like this time he was lining up the hyzer. He has a great sidearm, so he's capable of doing that right route as well. And here we've got a local player here, Eli Ferguson, actually made it up to the lead card on round four. Yeah, really excited to see how Eli plays this. He's got a, you know, can throw really far. Mm -hmm. That's looking pretty good for his first shot of the day. Home course advantage as well. Maybe a little too straight. Fortunately, that one leaves wow. him OB. Actually snuck out OB on him. Mm -hmm. Next up, we got Latitude 64's Johnny McCray. Looks like he's going to be going with the wide hyzer out as well. Pretty common here. Most riders are just going to want to try and get out hyzer around this tree. Yep. Just the like Johnny. looking pretty good. Mm -hmm. He's got a putt down there. Chris is just going to be looking to put this one close. It looks like his Proto PA4 there. Mm -hmm. It's a fun pin placement here because if you don't quite get all the way down there, you've got those trees uh, directly in your way. So uh, definitely want to try and go wide, but not wide enough to go OB, unfortunately, like Eli did here. Yeah, Eli's having to, as you saw there, a car just came by right behind him, and it's looking like he's having to deal with a little bit of that. And You know, maybe that was a first-round Jader shot, mm -hmm. not being on film too much, but... Pretty yeah. excited to see how the rest of his round goes. For sure. I did talk to Eli the night before this tournament, or before this round, and he said, uh, good thing you're filming lead card. He said, it won't make me nervous at all. So <laughs> a little bit of jitters for sure. Joey here, after his turnover inside with this flick, looks like he's got a putt. Lining it up. He's a hyzer putter naturally anyway, so this is a good putt for him. Oh, oh, almost, Dan. Looks like it almost hit the nubs on the inside. Mm -hmm. Johnny, a little more inside and a little closer, so he's pinched off quite a bit more than Joey was. Looks like he's going with the... I'm not sure what you call this, but do you know? Um, No. I've seen a couple players do that before. Um, You know, you don't really think it might come into use. Yeah, as you see there. It's not something you really go out and practice every day. Yeah. Chris, even though he isn't that far away, he's still going to be doing his routine, taking his time. Mm -hmm. He's going to be able to put that one in. Mm -hmm. BB also looking to tap this one in. Birdie three, it's definitely a soft uh, par four, but it's that way on the scorecard uh, by the course designer and tournament director. So that's how we put it on the videos. Eli tapping in, unfortunately, after his OB. 
Johnny there as well, just tapping in. We're going to be going on to uh, hole four. You can see Dickerson now at 44 down after that hole. Hole four is uphill, 310 foot. Roddy Heiser. Um, most of the guys probably going to be going with a mid range, wouldn't you say, Seth? Yep. In years past, um, there was a tree directly off the tee there, so it forced the players to go a little bit more Anheuser. But now that that tree has fallen for the past two years, you've been able to just throw this pretty wide, or for the more power players, even a mid range. Which before that was kind of uncomfortable shot, you know, with that tree being there. Oh, for sure. Even being a lefty, uh, it was still very uncomfortable with that tree right off the tee. Yep. Joey here, not sure what he's throwing, but looks like to be a fairway driver. Mm -hmm. A little wider than Chris, and just left low. it low into the hill. Mm -hmm. See what BB can do here. Looks like a mid range, or no, maybe a fairway. Not sure, but looks like he's going wide. Mm -hmm. That's what you want right here. Just yep. get it nice and wide. Skipped up right near the basket. He's going to be putting for two for sure. Oh, yeah, definitely. Johnny here is going with mid-range. Mm -hmm. Puts on a good hazard. Great shot. Should be yep. no problem for him getting a two there. Eli, I've actually filmed him ace this hole before, so yep. uh, if you haven't seen the uh, BDGC bra Basket Bracket Series, make sure you check that out and you can see Eli actually acing this hole. Looks like he's not got another good line on it. Yep. He's going to be up there putting as well. Mm -hmm. Great shots from those guys. Joey here, the farthest out. It's, looks like he might be just sending a jump putt. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. He actually <laughs> so, made that. That's a great putt. <laughs> for sure. we got to get a backtrack on that one for sure. Second hole of the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that looks great. A little turn. Just barely caught on the nubs, but that's a great putt by Joey. Oh, yeah. That's how you want to start the, the, uh, the day of the tournament for sure, or this day at least. Uh, Dickerson putting for a two here. Yep. Uh, worth mentioning also, Dickerson coming off yesterday, the day before this, uh, he shot a course record at Panther Creek. Yep. So uh, check that round out if you haven't already. Another nice birdie from Dickerson. BB here. Putting with his PA3s, trying to put this one in there. Mm -hmm. Actually lose that one low. Mm -hmm. Uncharacteristic, BB's been banging big putts all weekend. Definitely. Not what we're used to. Eli here for his two. He's going to be able to put that one in there. Mm -hmm. Johnny here with the CTP. Hopefully going to get his two. No problems there. So as you see, we were on hole four here. I failed to mention it the first. Uh, we started on hole three uh, because the tournament director had the ladies start on holes one and two for the tournament. So... Uh, moving on to hole five here, a 345 foot par three. Uh, this is just basically a tunnel shot straight down through the middle. The right, the right-handed players are going to be. Uh, most of them are going to be throwing the sidearm with some turn. Um, they wanted to come back and just give himself a putt mm -hmm. because the hill slopes from right to left. That you know the, the forehand lands better on the slope. Yeah, as small and as straight as this gap is, you definitely want some sort of flex shot. Just like Dickerson's done here. Yep. That's what you want? Mm hmm This is a hard hole to get for sure. Uh, it's not one that's as common as some of the other par threes to get. Uh, actually, uh, before filming this tournament here, the only person I'd ever filmed to this hole is uh, one of Seth's best friends, Nicholas Jeffers. So, shout out to Nick. Joey there. Joey has a good forehand, as said in previous rounds. So this is a good shot for him. Johnny's not known for throwing much for many forehands, so he's going to be going up the gut with a backhand. And that looks amazing. Dead straight. Mm. Yeah, don't see that very much. <laughs> no. Right handed backhand down the pipe. Let's just see that one again, why don't we? Absolutely needing no turn, just throwing it dead straight. Yeah. 
It just looked like it was on a rope. Mm -hmm. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. For two. Eli here, he, he throws far forehands as well. Mm -hmm. It's a good hole for him. But like Josh said, this is, uh, going into this course, hole five is not really one you think about birdieing every time, you know, just because of the gap and the way the hill slopes and stuff. Mm -hmm. Eli left his a little bit right and high and unfortunately got knocked down early. Looks like BB's going sidearm as well. And he just left that one really wide. Mm -hmm. Catching an early tree. BB's going to be first up for his approach uh, here. That right side over there is very thick, so it's kind of find a small line and try and make your way through it. Looks like BB's going to be jump putting again from really far. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We've seen that a lot from him. Make sure you check out some of the previous coverage. BB just absolutely doing yep. that right there. I would say one there. of the things he does best just jump putting and getting it up there for uh, where he needs to be. You can see Eli here did get knocked down pretty early. Mm, a little wide and got knocked down once again. He's going to be up to putt. Hopefully try to get his par here. As you mentioned, not a hole that you expect to get a two, but not a hole you expect to get a four either. Just and That's a great putt. Yeah, absolutely great putt. Chris here looks like he's just outside the circle. He's going to be uh, step putting it. Mm -hmm. Looking for a birdie too. Uphill putt as well. There's some rough footing over there on that side. Yep. Seems that doesn't really matter. Nope. <laughs> Great birdie right there. Yep. Sometimes it seems like Chris would rather be outside the circle because <laughs> his step putt's so great. Mm hmm. Joe here also in like the same exact spot. Mm -hmm. He got his as well. Uh, as well. Two bird, seeing two birdies on this hole. Uh, I know you hear a lot in disc golf coverage that you're not going to see stuff like that, but that's two great birdies in a row right there. And Johnny is yet to putt. Yeah. BB getting his par. Mm -hmm. Good save. BB and Eli both got knocked down early, but still saved their par, so. And Johnny, just absolute tap in. Yep. That's going to be one of the best twos you'll ever see on this hole. Just popping it straight down the middle and then a tap in two. You're not going to see that very often. Moving on to hole number six, uh, 290 feet. A uh, little lefty hyzer, uh, short flick for these righties. Uh, there's right side gap as well, but most of these guys are going to be going on the left side here. Looks like Chris is going to be flicking something like an A2. Pretty overstable at the end. Mm -hmm. Just let it finish up there. Mm -hmm. He finished up right behind those trees there. He definitely, definitely has a putt for a two. Joey going to flick. Not sure what he's flicking. Something pretty overstable, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. Just letting it fade down there to the right. And yeah, that's, that's there. Mm -hmm. See what Johnny can do here. Yeah, once again, he doesn't throw a lot of sidearms, and you see him attacking that right side, trying to get down there. Oh, well, he still got down there. Yeah, uh, he's still putting. Yeah. Eli looks to be going with the flick as well. And he hits the gap. Mm -hmm. He just left that one a little wide, maybe a kick or something. BB last up here. Like he's going with the flick. A little inside. Fought down. Eli's the farthest out. Maybe uh, that bush might be a tree, I guess. Maybe I don't know. That overgrown area is probably in his vision there. Looks like he tried to go high and over branches or two. Next up, BB jump putting. Lining it up. 
hoping to get this two after missing a short putt on four and having to save the par on five. Oh. And there's not much you can do about that. That's a great putt by BB. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that happens, unfortunately. Johnny looks to be outside jumping it. He's going to make that one mm -hmm. from his step putt. Yeah, he never questioned it. You could tell out of his hand, just 100% confidence. Yep. Chris happened to straddle a little bit here. Trying to put this one in there for the two. Yep. He's going to push himself for four down for the round. That's a great start here on this course. Yep. Joey, with being the closest, he's going to come in and tap in his two as well. Versus these guys are hoping, hoping to get their par and move on to the next hole. Up and in from Eli. Yep. He'd be going to walk up and tap his in. Hate to see that. and I mean, just an unfortunate spit out. Sometimes they happen. Yep. So Dickerson extended his lead. He's 47 down now. Lutz behind him at 38 down. We're going to be going on to hole number seven, 340 feet. Um... Usually the left side gap here is uh, the most common play, but when you've got an arm like Dickerson, a lot of these guys do this big hyzer over the right side. Yep. Looks like Dickerson's going to be going with something like an X1 and just trying to throw it up and let it hyzer over to the basket. Mm -hmm. So you did that pretty well, got over that tree that you had to miss. Let's see if we can see it finish. And he's down oh, yeah. by the basket, so... Uh, when you step up to this hole, Seth, I mean, we're thinking lefty hole all, all day, so seeing Dickerson go that route is, you know, you got to have a lot of distance to get down there. Yep. And Joey, almost. looks like he almost aced it. Mm -hmm. Ended up a little bit behind the basket. Johnny is looking at his different options here. He's got an absolutely great turnover game, so looks like that's what he's opting for. Some kind of mid-range of some sort, maybe? Mm -hmm. All the way down past the basket. Ended up going a little bit deep. Mm -hmm. And Eli throws, he he has the option to throw that big hyzer, but it looks like he's electing to just go sidearm. Mm -hmm. Something he practices a lot. Unfortunately, got knocked down early there. Yep. BB going sidearm as well. Sidearm, yep. A little more inside than the other guys, but it looks like it's working out. Didn't look like it hit too many trees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty long ways from the basket still. If you get a check, chance, check out 2018 coverage here. Uh, BB was in a similar area to where Eli was right there and almost canned it. Just absolutely, as we mentioned, you know, his jump putt's just outstanding. Here he is trying to make this one, and he just left it high. Mm -hmm. So you can see here, Johnny definitely went way long past the basket. Yep, he's coming back with another step. Just left that one high off the band. He'd be looking for a par save. And gets that one in there. Sure, he's glad to make that one. Joey, after almost acing it, Let's see if he can put it in. Just an outstanding flip game from Joey. Is if you've not heard or, or seen a lot of coverage of him, absolutely one of the best uh, forehand players in the game. Eli here for his part. Yep, he got it. Chris here, after his big hyzer with the next one, mm -hmm. it's looking like he's just going to come over and tap it in. Yeah, as you mentioned, still doing his routine. Just a few feet from the basket and making sure he lines it up. Yep. And Johnny there with his par. Mm -hmm. So Dickerson now at 48 down. We'll be moving on to hole eight. This is a long hole, 615 feet. 
it's a par four and uphill as well. So uh, basically, distance is the key on this one. Yep. Well, the riding hyzer uh, obviously fades into the hill there, so all these riders are probably just going to be throwing backhands just as far as they can. Mm -hmm. Looks like Dickerson lining up, taking a big run up and giving that one a little bit of turn. Just deciding to crush it. I mean, why not if you can, right? Oh, yeah. And it's he is ways. way up there. Oh, yeah. Maybe, what, 100 feet from the basket? Yeah, probably more than that, but mm -hmm. still a crush. Mm -hmm. Joey here looks like he's going sidearm. He absolutely gets on that one. Mm -hmm. Just fading down the hill a little bit early. That is still crushed for a sidearm, though. Oh, yeah, for sure. Johnny next up looks like he's going to recoil. We saw him get quite a bit of distance out of, that, out of this recoil. The last round? Mm hmm. He just threw that one low. Had the right turn. Mm -hmm. Eli here. I'll say he's looking forward to this hole after some of the shorter holes that he wasn't able to get up and down for birdies. So uh, he's looking. He, Eli's got a big arm, so he's just looking to get out there and crush this one. That's looking really good. Mm -hmm. Smooth release. I'm getting way up there. Oh, yeah. BB. Putting his out there as well. A little lower than everybody else, but just mm -hmm. as far, probably. Getting a good amount of turn on it. Oh, yeah. It's way up there. For it to be as low as that was, that was a lot of distance. For Joe, Joe, yeah, he's at the bottom of the hill, you can see here. Yep, it's a long way up there. Mm -hmm. Helps when you get those stand seal sidearms. Just going to leave that one short. Looks like. Johnny throwing some kind of upshot with a mid-range or a putter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> These guys are just way up here. <laughs> Maybe once again jump putting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Probably over 100 feet. It's look good though. Mm -hmm. All these guys are just trying to pitch up and get that three. Mm -hmm. Just quite out of everybody's range. Until you get to Dickerson here. Yeah, that's... I mean, he's looking at a putt for a two on this. <laughs> 615 foot uphill, and he's. Jump button for two, so. Yep. Or step button, rather. Give it a little half go, looks like. Mm -hmm. oh, mm. In line, just, just a not hard bit. enough. Mm -hmm. Would have loved to have seen that. Yeah, I'm not sure this hole's ever been toed unless it was a throw in. Yep, I'm, I'm sure it's been thrown in a few times, but other than that, see, Joey just left too short and probably rolled away. Mm -hmm. Just tossing up there with his bird. Up and down. He'll save his par from there. Johnny, looks like Circle's Edge, maybe. Maybe just inside. Yep. Good putt. Well Left it short, but he made the putt. Mm -hmm. BB here, after that jump putt. Yeah. Good hit from BB as well. Looks like Eli's just going to walk over and put his in the basket. So are the rest of these guys super close. Tap in three from Dickerson. So after hole eight, we had uh, all three except for Joey with the par. Going on to hole nine, uh, 450 feet, uh, soft par four. Um, this one, uh, just wide open pretty much. Uh, it goes over a valley and then back uphill. So a roll away potential is definitely there. So most of these guys are just going to be throwing the hyzer and just play it into the side of the hill. Mm -hmm. All throwing over stable discs, pretty high. Yeah, that's looking good. Let's see where it lands, and yeah. 
Great roll at the end, mm -hmm. and he's parked. <laughs> Johnny, we've been seeing him doing, instead of the Heiser shot, more of a turnover kind of shot. Let's see if he goes with that here. No, looks like Heiser shot. He knew out of his hand he didn't quite commit to that one. Mm -hmm. Still not a bad shot, though. Mm -hmm. Eli is probably very used to parking this hole. Just yep. Good right-handed Heiser. Mm-hmm. As long as you put it high enough and wide enough, it should be okay. And that's looking perfect. Yeah. Lower than Chris's, but still there, obviously. Mm -hmm. Good shot. All right, now there is OB long. Most of that's not going to be coming into play, and then the amphitheater down there as well would be OB. But uh, normally that doesn't come into play unless somebody really turns something over. Yep. Maybe backhand as well. Mm -hmm. Flipping his up a little bit more. He's got just, a putt from there. Yeah, just inch a little left. Mm -hmm. Joey Lutz, uh, out of the Nashville area, I believe. Uh, Chattanooga. Chattanooga area, okay. So sponsored by Full Flight. Yep. Looks like he's on up the backhand at Hazard. Yeah, and that's looking wide enough. Mm hmm. And yeah. Good roll at the end as well. Johnny here with the complete downhill, maybe giving it a half bid. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Not be too aggressive because of potential roll as you see here. Fortunately, that one set down. That can get really bad. You can roll all the way down to the bottom of the hill there. BB well outside the circle. Oh, yeah. And that's a great putt from BB there. I'm going to see him make that one. Mm -hmm. we got Eli here putting down the hill. Mm. A little left side. Joey putting in his two after a great drive. Johnny coming back for the three. Yeah. Looks like we're going to have Eli and Chris here. Tapping theirs in. Say so the vast majority of the field is going to be, or the NPL field at least, going to be two in this hole. Probably nothing higher than a three on this hole, unless there's some crazy unfortunate roll away that definitely can happen. Dickerson now at 51 down. Um, going to be moving on to hole number 10, 485 feet. Another, another par four on the scorecard. These guys are probably not thinking par four, but uh, OB to the right downhill and then OB on the left as well. So OB everywhere on this hole. Yep. Once again, he has the potential to – this is another – if you have the distance, you can get the two hole. Mm -hmm. Not everybody's going to be getting it, though, so you have a chance to get a stroke on the field. Looks like he just – I mean, that's there, but just a little low. Mm-hmm. lining up a backhand as well. I'd say uh, it's hard to speak from a righty's uh, standpoint on this, but they're probably trying to turn something just after that uh, tree on the right side there. Get something to turn and then flex out of the end, I would think, right, Seth? Yeah. <laughs> and almost takes a squirrel's life there on that tree if you didn't see it. He's just hanging on. It's looking good. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. got down there for a putt. <laughs> Joey here was asking BB if he saw that squirrel before he threw. He didn't see it. Joey, no surprise to see him going to the flick on this hole. Yep. Yeah, see that tree right there on the left as uh, the sidearm and the lefty throw, you know, you swing from left to right. So that tree is really in play right there. Uh, end up hitting it a lot of the time because it's in the perfect spot. This tee pad's kind of downhill as well too, so footing can be a little bit of an issue on this one. And Johnny's just 
Yep. It just goes long. 485 feet. Why not, right? Yep. Eli here. Going to be throwing the same kind of shot, I imagine. Left or right moving. Looks like he's turned that one quite a bit. Heading towards the OB. Unfortunate roll. Mm. That was going to leave him out of bounds. Yeah, that hidden bounds and just rolled out. That's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. He's going to be just trying to get up and down from here after taking his OB stroke. Yep. Does just that. Yep. Joey, looking just to put it close. Probably, probably just gonna give it a half bid once again. Mm -hmm. A little too far to be fully committing. And there's no problem in that right there. He didn't seem to like that, but I mean, he's definitely gonna be up and in for the three. Big sure the other half go as well. Yep. It's under the basket. Johnny lining up a turbo putt. Yeah. Always good to see the Johnny Turbo mm -hmm. every once in a while and around. I know when I was filming him on the weekend, I was excited every time I saw him set it up like that. Yep. He, he canned quite a few on the weekend. So BB looks like he had CTP here. Let's see if he can get up and in. Stroke on the card if he makes it. Mm -hmm. Oh. Left that one low. All these guys are going to be tapping in their threes, except for Eli here. This is for his par save after that OB. But this one as well, uh, you don't expect, uh, uh, you're not playing this one as a four uh, if you're in the open division, honestly. All these guys are good, happy to get their threes, though. Oh, yeah, for sure. Be there with all those discs. Uh, moving on to hole 11, which is going to be the final hole of this front nine video, uh, 290 feet. Uh, this one's uh, quite different compared to the other holes, not quite as open. Uh, there's a few gaps off the tee pad, and then it gets really wooded uh, once you see the smaller trees off into the distance there. Dixon going with a forehand. Yep, and that more inside gap. Turn it over, and uh, you want it to come back to the right just as he's doing there. And uh, Wow, Almost did that hit, hit that the basket? Uh, no, I don't think it hit it, but it, it went right by it. We'll be here with the other route, a lot wider, more hyzer. Didn't look too happy with that, but that's okay. I mean, he's going to be putting. Joey going with the inside, like Chris. Mm -hmm. Once again, you just want to give it a little turn and just have it fade back to the right. That, that's looking perfect. Yep. Another great shot. Over there where Chris is. Mm -hmm. For Johnny, it looks like he's going the wide route with a turnover. Yep. And oh, yeah. As I mentioned earlier, just an outstanding turnover, ga ga turnover game from Johnny. And he's up there putting for a two. Yep. Eli going inside forehand as well. Going wide is pretty difficult, as Johnny and uh, BB did there. It's hard to get the disc all the way back to the right. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Eli almost smacked that tree and just turned it a little too much. And that can be scary hitting that tree because you can skip OB on the right side there. Mm -hmm. uh, there is also, we didn't mention, but there's OB long behind the basket too. So I would say about mm, 20 feet behind the basket, there's a hill that kind of drops off and there's a road behind that. So BB yep. with a high putt. You saw he there. Because of the OB, he just kind of gave it a half bid a little higher than normal. Mm -hmm. So you can see Joe is right at the edge of the hill there. So fortunately stayed up on top, didn't have to worry about the OB. You're going to put that one in for his two. It's a great two. Johnny here after that really great turnover. Mm -hmm. Putting that one in.
Then you got Chris after his forehand. Pretty routine putt for Chris here. Yeah. Up and in, no problems. BB. After giving a little half go, hoping to just come over and tap this one in, probably. Mm -hmm. No problem for BB. Yep. And Eli here after tossing up as well. Love to see some of the regional players make it on these cards with some of these bigger names. So, um, after hole 11, after this front nine, uh, Chris Dickerson at 53 down, Joey Lutz 43 down. So, Dickerson's got a 10 stroke lead going into the back nine of round four. Uh, BB sitting at 38 down, Johnny McCray at 39 down, and uh, Eli dropped off a little bit. He's sitting at 34 down, but uh, we'll see what he can do on the back nine. Please stick around. Uh, make sure you check out uh, some of the coverage from the first three rounds if you haven't already. Uh, once again, I want to thank Seth for joining me on commentary. Yep, hope to catch you guys on the front or back. Mm -hmm. And thanks to my brother Jason for doing the catch cam for me uh, out there uh, two days that weekend. So uh, a couple of my favorite shots here. If you don't mind, check us out on Facebook and Instagram at slash Basinger's Disc Golf Channel TN. And a uh, shout out to our Patreon supporters. If you want to join them, check us out on patreon.com slash bdgc. So thanks for watching. As always, please click like, subscribe, comment, share this video with your friends, and help promote disc golf in your area.